Do you want faster Wi-Fi? Of course you do. Everyone does. But is there really anything you can do to speed up your Wi-Fi? Yes. In this video, I'm going to share four practical tips to speed up your Wi-Fi. Before I get to the Wi-Fi tips, we have to talk about Ethernet. Using an Ethernet cable is not using Wi-Fi, but it's ultimately the fastest speed you're ever going to get out of your internet connection. It's not always practical to have long Ethernet cables running all throughout your house, but you could consider having a contractor install an Ethernet jack into the wall of your bedroom or office. You can use apps like Angie or Thumbtack to find a local professional who could do this. I installed Ethernet jacks at my house, I use it at my desk, and I enjoy blazing fast internet. But even if you are able to install Ethernet at your house, it's still important to have fast, reliable Wi-Fi for your phones, tablets, smart TVs, and other IoT devices. So what are the best ways to increase your Wi-Fi speed? Here are four tips to consider. The first tip is to check your router's channel settings and DNS settings. These are two settings that directly impact the speed of your Wi-Fi connection. It's important to note that your ISP-provided router may not let you change these settings, so stay tuned to the end of the video for recommendations on router upgrades. Your Wi-Fi router broadcasts a signal within a range of channels. If other networks nearby are using the same channels, there's going to be interference. You can think of it like radio. Each radio station uses a different, unique frequency so they don't interfere with each other. Your Wi-Fi acts in a similar way. You can scan all your local Wi-Fi channels using wireless diagnostics for Mac or Wi-Fi analyzer for Windows. This tool will allow you to see which Wi-Fi channels your neighbors are using so you can pick a unique channel for your network. And while you're in your router settings, I would also recommend switching your DNS server. The default DNS settings are often slow, so I would recommend changing your DNS servers to 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. These are proprietary DNS servers from Cloudflare, and they're way faster. The second tip is to check which Wi-Fi speed you're paying for. To do this, log into your internet service provider's dashboard and look at your plan. There will be an advertised download speed, and it's important to note that you're probably not going to see an advertised upload speed. This is because unless you have a fiber connection, the upload speed is typically pretty slow. So your download speed is what you should be concerned about. Once you've identified your advertised Wi-Fi speed, take an ethernet cable and connect it to a device and run a speed test. You can do this using speedtest.net, and if the speed you're getting is less than 70% of your advertised speed, call your internet service provider and let them know because there may be a problem with your connection. And if you're in the US and you're getting terribly slow speeds, you can actually file a complaint with the FCC and they can work with your ISP to make sure you can get speeds closer to what's advertised. And if the advertised speed you pay for is less than 250 megabits per second, you should consider or upgrading to a faster plan. The third tip is an easy change that anyone can try and it's to move your router to a better location. If it's currently located in a cabinet or small closet, move it into an open space if possible. Sometimes it's not possible to move your router depending on where the internet connection comes into your house, but if you have any flexibility with location, get it out of tight spaces and move it into an open area. You may need to buy a longer ethernet cable to do this, so we'll have what I would recommend linked below. And that brings us to the last tip, and this may be the most important tip in this video, and that's to avoid using your ISP provided router. Unless you've purchased your own router, there's a good chance you're using a router your internet service provider gave you. Oftentimes you're gonna be charged an equipment rental fee for this, but even if they're not charging you anything extra, you really don't wanna be using your ISP router. These are cheap, one size fits most routers that are not gonna be a good setup for a lot of houses. Houses all have different square footages and number of floors and floor layouts, and just having one single router sometimes may not be the best setup for your house. At a minimum, purchasing your own router is likely gonna save you money so you don't have to pay that equipment rental fee, but it's very likely that if you use your own equipment and ditch the ISP router, you're gonna see significant improvements. So you might be wondering which Wi-Fi router you should be using. If you go to Amazon and search for Wi-Fi router, you're gonna find thousands of options ranging from $30 to hundreds of dollars. So how do you know which one is right for you? First, make sure you understand the different Wi-Fi standards. You're likely gonna see routers advertising speeds with numbers like AC1200 or AX3000. 
These letters refer to different Wi-Fi standards. AC is short for 802.11ac, which is also known as Wi-Fi 5. AX is short for 802.11ax, which is also known as Wi-Fi 6 or sometimes Wi-Fi 6e. The numbers refer to a maximum advertised speed the Wi-Fi router can deliver. These numbers can be deceptive though. In this example with this AX3000 number, if you look at the description, you'll actually see that the 5 gigahertz network can deliver a maximum of 2,402 megabits per second, and the 2.4 gigahertz network can deliver a simultaneous simultaneous 574 megabits per second of bandwidth. So when you combine the two, they're 3000, but your device is only gonna connect to one network or the other. So the fastest possible speed this router can provide is actually 2402 megabits per second. Also, you need to consider how many of your devices actually support Wi-Fi 6. Right now, Wi-Fi 6 is a relatively new standard, meaning not many devices support it. You can connect old devices to Wi-Fi 6 routers, but they're not going to be able to take advantage of the fastest speeds and the benefits of Wi-Fi 6. So you have to ask yourself if it's really worth paying the extra money to get the Wi-Fi 6 standard when a lot of your devices probably aren't going to be able to take advantage of it. But I will say that I'm a fan of future-proofing your network, so if you're going to invest in a router, Wi-Fi 6 routers aren't that much more expensive than Wi-Fi 5 options, and if you're buying a mesh networking system, you definitely should be buying Wi-Fi 6 mesh devices. This is because they communicate with each other using Wi-Fi 6, so that connection, if nothing else, is going to make for a much better Wi-Fi experience. But how do you know if you need a mesh networking system? Well, if your house is less than 1,500 square feet, I'd say you'll be fine with a single router. This TP-Link AX1800 router supports gigabit speeds and will give you a much better Wi-Fi experience for under $100. The AX means that it supports Wi-Fi 6, and if we look in the description, we see that it supports 1200 megabits per second on a 5 gigahertz network and 574 megabits per second on a 2.4 gigahertz network. If you have a bigger house or want the most reliable Wi-Fi connection, that's when I'd recommend a mesh networking system. These systems have multiple access points that communicate with each other wirelessly to expand the reach of your network without you needing ethernet cables or anything complicated. A few options for mesh systems would be the Linksys Velop mesh system for under $200 or the Eero 6 Plus mesh system for just under $300. Either of these systems are going to offer great value and reliability and be a significant improvement over a single router. If you're anything like me and you know that Ethernet is the best way to enjoy your internet connection, you can actually have a networking system with multiple access points that are all hardwired via Ethernet using enterprise level systems like Unify or Meraki Go. That's why I spent $2,000 on my networking system and I have a video you can watch about that here.